everyone, and welcome back to Cooking with Anna, the cooking show for quarantine. Today, we are making Nordic cinnamon buns, and I'm actually excited because I am part Swedish, so let's get to it. Um, today, we are using a new recipe from Radish, not from a recipe cook or cake box or online. We're using a Radish recipe. And I have, my ingredients are for the dough, are a half cup of lukewarm milk, warm milk, whatever, whatever you want to call it, um, a half teaspoon of salt, a tablespoon of sugar, one and a half cup of flour, and a packet of rapid rising yeast, and a quarter cup of vegetable oil. Now, the reason our milk is warm is because when the yeast is cold, it's asleep, so you have to have something warm to wake it up. And my mom has the kind that you don't need to proof with sugar before, like, to make it rise. So, first, we are going to add, I already heated my milk up for 30 seconds in the microwave, so it's already warm. So first we're gonna add our flour, yeast, sugar, and salt. So half, oh, one and a half cups of flour goes in. A tablespoon of sugar. A half teaspoon of salt. And if I can get the yeast open, we will add it. I'm gonna do it inside the bowl so I don't spill any. <laughs> My camera girl's gonna help me. I can't open yeast. By the way, my camera girl is my mom, so, yeah. Oh, look, she got it open. So now that the yeast is open, we can pour it in. Now, I should have opened it before, but, oh, well, there's still something here. Okay, so this is my bowl right now, and I'm going to put everything in here and put it off to the side for a second. And I'm going to give this a quick mix, mixy, mixy, and I'm so sad because I don't get to use a whisk. I have to use a spoon, a boring old spoon. Spoons, so overrated. Okay, now it says add oil and warm milk, mix until the dough comes together, and yeah, let's do this thing. Da na na, da na na, na na. Mm -mm, dance for it. I know, I'm weird. But you know what, if you're weird, work it. Now I'm gonna add my half cup of warm milk. Okay, now we're going to mix it. I love the smell and taste of dough, mainly the taste. My grandmother thinks I'm crazy, but only cause she doesn't like dough. And as you can see, it's starting to come together. And once, it's mixed enough that I can knead it. We're going to knead it. And it is mixed enough. I am going to get a bite of this dough, by the way. Count on it. Okay, so now I'm scraping. You know, we're gonna have we're gonna make a chart, and it's how many times Anna spills something. Okay, so I'm using technique that my grandma taught me, which is, one, get the dough together. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, yeah. Which is, oh no, she, it's falling apart, I can't do it, no! Twist, pull, fold, punch, twist. Pull, fold, punch, twist. We made a song, pull, fold, punch, twist. It's also a good way to get stress, relief stress. <sighs> I love kneading dough. It's so satisfying. It feels like slime, which is weird, but it feels like slime to me. And I love playing with slime because slime is so satisfying. You get to crunch it and knead it and stretch it. It's so stretchy. And you know, you want to make sure you don't over knead dough, or it just, you know, it's bad. <laughs> so once I'm done kneading the dough, we are going to roll it and roll it out. Welcome back, everybody. So as you can see, our dough came together nicely, and on a floured surface with a floured rolling pin, 
I am rolling it out to make an eight by two. Eight by 20, kind of like rectangle shape. And I have this to measure it. So this way across would be eight inches. And then two this way would be 20, kind of. I mean, that's a nine inch pan. So you know what? Let's just go with it. And it is already sticking, but that's okay. So we're just gonna roll it out. And you wanna make sure it's even because if it's not, even though we're cutting it, there's still gonna be thicker areas and thinner areas, and it's gonna bake all unevenly. And one area is gonna be done, and one's not, and it's just gonna be dough. And I'm gonna move this out of the way because it's getting in my way. But that's why you want it to be, you know, even. So I'm rolling it out and trying to make a square, but right now it looks like a blob. So I'm gonna fold it like this and like that and back down. And you wanna make sure you're not ripping it, because if it's too thin, it will rip. And uh, so I'm just rolling it. <sighs> I love rolling. It also relieves stress, by the way. Anything really using, see? Okay, I'm just peel it off nice and gently. Probably tells me I need more flour on my rolling pin. So I'm just gonna bring this over here so I don't spill any. Get it off the dough. Take a little bit of flour. That's probably good. Rub it on my hands over and just do this like you're rubbing lotion on your arms kind of <laughs> I have weird ways of remembering stuff so now I'm rolling it rolling is so fun it's not as fun as whisking whisking is probably my top choice okay I am not achieving that perfect square shape okay so once we have this all rolled out, we are going to start with the filling. Okay guys, so as you can see, my mom had to help me a little bit roll out the dough because I had a blob and not a perfect rectangle shape. And it doesn't have to be perfect, I'm just saying perfect. So as you can see, we have a approximately 20 by eight rectangle. And for the filling, I have a, a teaspoon and a half of cinnamon and three, two thirds of a cup of brown sugar. So I'm gonna pour this in together. This is only two ingredients going in this because the butter's gonna go in the dough before we put this on. So I am going to mix this up very well or you'll just have cinnamon and the brown sugar, which won't taste very good. Well, it might. I mean, I never, I don't know, I never tried it. And I'm going to just scrunch it and my hands are getting oily, but that's okay, because that's part of baking. And it's probably good right now. Oh, I this giant clump of cinnamon, I need to break up. <laughs> break up. Okay. The sugar monster is coming to get you. I'm just gonna brush it off. Brush all the bits and pieces off before I wipe it on my apron, because we just sweep, sweep the floors. And it was my chore, so I choose not to sweep it again. Okay. So in here, I have three tablespoons of, yes, three tablespoons of melted butter, and I'm going to dip my handy dandy brush in the, the melted butter that we melted for about 30 to 60 seconds, and I'm just going to brush without ripping it, because I learned the lesson the hard way. I was going like, and it just tore in half. <laughs> oh, good times. Not really. The bread didn't go out very well. So now I'm just brushing and trying not to splatter butter everywhere because I have a tendency to do that. And I'm pretty sure we have to use all the butter. So make sure you do and don't just pour it because if you do, it will go like this. And you will have melted butter all over your counter. So I know it might look like a lot, but as it soaks it in, you can put more on. And you just want to keep dipping your brush in, like so. You want to make sure you get the edges too. And I missed the edges, so. It's okay if you get a little butter on the counter, because we'll wipe it down later. But you don't want to be like super messy, because then your parent or guardian will kill you, because you got melted butter all over the counter. And I'm dripping, so I'm just going to put it over there. 
Get some more butter on here. It looks like a giant pancake with butter on it. It looks so shiny. There's a lot of butter down here. I'm addicted to shiny things. So I'm just smoothing it all out a little bit. I just sprayed butter on the seat. That's strike two for me spilling stuff. Now I'm just gonna dab a little here. Now it's different when you have, that's a lot. It's different when you have less butter because if it was awful, it would have gone anywhere, everywhere, trust me. But if you have a little bit left, then it's okay to dump. I'm gonna bring some down here. This is very buttery, but that's okay. There's a giant puddle of butter. If I can go jump in butter puddles, that'd be amazing. Butter puddles. Well, I'd actually rather chocolate puddles, actually. Only because it would look like my big key. It's out of one. Okay, so it looks like there's a lot of butter down here. Wait. Oh, there's a lot of butter up here. Maybe I need to bring it more to the middle. So it looks like our butter is all smoothed out. And I'm pretty sure we just used the butter to keep the powder, this stuff mixture on here, but I'm not sure. Okay, so the butter is all done, and that looks like a lot of butter. So now I'm going to pour this on and attempt to smooth it out. So I'm just gonna take a little bit here. I already spilled some, but you know, it's the first time for everything. I'm spilling a bunch. Ugh. Save the clump. And I'm just going to sprinkle it on like snow or powdered sugar. That's a large clump, that's a large clump. Okay. It's like it's snowing brown. It's not a very fun color. I'd rather it be blue. It'd be weird if it snowed blue. I'm getting really off topic. <laughs> We're talking about snow and we didn't even get any. Well, that's a large clump. Okay. No, nope, that's a bad idea. I'm gonna take the spoon out though because it's getting in my way. So I'm just gonna get it into all the places where there's not powdered sugar, including the edges, because as you can see, at, like with the butter, there's not a lot around the edges. And you wanna make sure that you get the edges because if you bite into it, you'll just get a giant mouthful of dough before you get the good stuff. And it's okay, dough, this dough's good, I like it. That was a lot, that was a lot. <laughs> you know what, we'll smooth it all out later. Okay, so now I'm gonna do this edge. I know there's a lot in a lot of plates, like there's giant clumps, but we're getting there, we're getting there. And I'm just gonna sprinkle it on this edge and in the, in the bald spots. So here, here. When it dries, I know it's weird, but it looks like strands of hair. Like when the butter dried because of the brush strokes. And now I'm just dumping it. And now I have to spread it out. And I don't know if I should use a spoon or my hands. I'm gonna use a spoon. So now I'm just spreading it out. Try not to, um, what's it called? Rip, that's the word I'm looking for. Rip the dough. And I also don't want to spill any. Oh, I just stepped in a giant puddle of powdered sugar pile. It's dusty. It feels weird on my toes. I have to sweep again. Now I want to make sure I get it all the way out to the edges because like I said before you don't want to get a giant mouthful of dough because a giant mouthful of dough is not very fun. And I'm going to get up here and cover it. It's like it's baking. It's not baking. A pizza. It's a dessert pizza. I am making a dessert pizza. Welcome to Anna's making of dessert pizza. Okay, so once I get this all spread out, we are going to fold it and cut it. So here I have my trusty cutting tool and we folded it over the dough. I'm gonna put this, these are the three we did for practice. So we folded the dough over and we patted it all down, make sure the cinnamon is even and there's not just a giant clump right here. Cause when you fold it, the cinnamon falls off. Okay, anyway, <laughs> we have our trusty cutting tool. That actually sharp, so I can do this, so don't worry about that. <laughs> So we made lines and I'm just gonna cut along the line and you wanna do a back and forward motion and pick up and then a back and forward motion. Ooh. And it's okay if it falls off, it's okay if it's not perfect. And you wanna try to twist it while it's on the, mm, this is called a countertop. 
and you want to twist it opposite ways and remember it doesn't have to be perfect and it's okay if some of the cinnamon falls out that's also okay so you just want to twist it and get your thumb under and twist and twist and then you're going to bring together and press and get one hand underneath and put it on your tray that's actually a fairly good one you want to spread them out a little bit but not too much because we have to fit four more on here so we're gonna cut. Remember, see how much cinnamon I lost? Look, we're gonna sprinkle that on top of the end. So we're gonna cut. Remember, oh, it almost fell off the countertop. That would not have been good. Oh, it's falling apart. You know what we're just gonna do right here? It's gonna be fine. So we wanna twist opposite ways. So like this, so one goes this way and one goes that way. And it's easier to twist on the countertop. So twist and twist and come together and make sure it's connected and you wanna get one hand underneath and put it on the tray. That one's not perfect, but you know what? It's okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We made seven, but you know what? That's okay. <clears throat> My mom split the dough. Okay, I'm just cutting back and forth. I knew there wasn't going to be that, but it didn't look like eight. Oh, mother. Okay, so we're going to take, and we're going to keep, nope, that. We're going to keep twisting, and once we have our seven, we are going to then let them rise. Hello, everybody. As you can see, they raised beautifully. And now we are going to put them in a 350 degree, that's not right, <laughs> an oven that was preheated to 350 degrees for 16 to 18 minutes or until lightly brown. And um, some sugar will seep out during this process. I sounded very smart there, using process. Pull the rack out, put these in, push them back, push the rack back in, close the oven gently, and I'm going to set the kitchen timer to 17 minutes because that's in the middle. I always mess this up, wait, seven, zero, zero, yes. We're going to come back when they're all nice and golden brown. So as you can see, they came out of the oven and they are nice and golden brown and some cinnamon did seep out, that's okay. And I'm just gonna dust them with very little powdered sugar because my mother said they were very sweet. That's probably enough. And then for our resident Swede to try, it's probably gonna work. Here you go, Swede. <laughs> Thank you. Try it. Try it? Okay. Try it. And then describe what it tastes like. Describe what it tastes like. Yeah, it's gonna be gooey. Mmm. It's very good. It's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice. Oh well, the the mother wants a bite. It's soft, it's mm -hmm. sweet. Gooey. It's good. Thank nice you work. for joining us on Cooking with Anna, the cooking show for quarantine. See